Well, you know you're in trouble when the good news is you have cancer. It's a hot, dark, windy day in St. Pete, Florida. The sky is black from a tropical storm coming our way. The medical offices all attached to the hospitals have been evacuated. But my doctor called me to make sure that I didn't miss my appointment that day. Well, it is my 38th birthday, so I'm thinking I'm special. They like me so much, they don't want me to miss my appointment. So imagine my shock and surprise when he sat me down and said, all the blood work and x-rays taken last week show all the signs of cancer. But we can't tell what kind or how far it's progressed. We're going to need to cut you open and take a look inside. Well, that wasn't the birthday present I was hoping to get that day. A few days later, I wake up in the ICU with tubes coming out of my throat and stomach. When the surgeon leans over to me, he says, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is you do have cancer and we expect it's completely curable. The bad news, however, we had to remove half of both your lungs your thymus gland, where it all started. Remove the lining around your heart, disconnect half your diaphragm, and we had to remove the left thoracic nerve to your vocal cord. And removing that nerve means you will never speak above a faint whisper ever again, because that would be impossible. Well, what's going through my head at this moment is, I'm gonna live. So that made me happy and relieved. After all, bad things happen to good people all the time, so why not me? I'd rather be happening to me than to a child. And my life is bigger than this one diagnosis. So I'm either going to learn to live without my voice, or by some miracle, I'm going to get my voice back. Either way, my life will continue. It's just going to be a little different. Well, that surgery was surprisingly easy to get over and recover from. But the chemo nearly killed me. Lying sick on the bathroom floor, wrapped around that toilet bowl, time and time again, I started to think to myself, am I happy with the life I've lived? And if I don't make it through this, if this chemo kills me, how will people remember me? Well, luckily my life did continue. And I thought to myself, okay, I may only be able to whisper, but I can whisper. So my successful business is going to continue. It's just going to take some resourcefulness to keep it going. So when I would get on the calls and whisper, I realized that wasn't going to work because people would hang up on me thinking I was an obscene phone caller. So my assistant became the voice on those calls. And that new thing called email, that became my lifeline to contacting my customers. And I realized I didn't have to be loud for people to buy from me. And when other things came up that I couldn't do, I just found new ways to get them done. That became my new normal. But I was different. After that practice run for my own death, I started to think, I'm not going to be caught off guard when the real day comes. My time and caring changed. Before, I was an extremely busy entrepreneur with a million places to be, places to go. After, when either of my daughters would come into the room and say, Mom, let's go to lunch today. I would do whatever it takes to clear my schedule. I'm done. We're going. Why? Because I knew that they wouldn't remember the money I made for them that day but it was the time and memory spent together. Believe it or not, you're building your legacy right now. Do you want to design it or live it by default? Think of your life as a TV series with uh, whatever, however many up and, coming, up and coming episodes ready to, to launch, when suddenly, with no notice, bam, it gets canceled, done, no more. And all those story threads that you thought were going to get resolved in up-and-coming episodes, can't. It's over. What are three things you'd want people to remember about the series of your life? 
And what's the sizzle reel going over and over and over in the minds of all who knew you? As for me, I went from lying on that hospital gurney with tubes coming out of me, told I'd never speak again above a faint whisper. It would be impossible to standing here talking to you. The doctors can't explain it. Let's just say I decided to believe the doctors were wrong. And what does it hurt to believe in what nobody else believes is possible? I'm not supposed to speak, but I speak for a living. So part of my legacy is giving hope to the hopeless. So one day, while watching all the bad news on TV, you can call me a little bit of a TV junkie, I thought to myself, where on earth did all that good news go? I know there's good news out there, but I don't hear about it. I don't see it on the news. So I decided to take it into my own hands and start my own TV show and spotlight good people doing good things, making a difference in this world. And then that turned into a live event series called the Live Your Legacy Summit, where good people doing good things were celebrated and awards are given out to those who turn calamity into triumph and then birth a nonprofit to serve that community. Take one of my past honorees, for example, Scarlett Lewis. Her little six-year-old son was killed in that Newtown, Connecticut massacre. On that day, when that gunman came into that first grade class, and he walked over and he killed their first grade teacher, Scarlett's son, little Jesse, stood right there. And the gunman pointed the bullet, the gun, right at Jesse. But he ran out of bullets in that moment. And the time it took for him to reload, little Jesse screamed over to his classmates that were lined up against the wall, scared to death. Run, run! And they all got out safely. And a split second later, that gunman shot and killed six-year-old Jesse. After that horrific day, that mother still believed in humanity. She still believed there are more good people in this world than bad people shooting up our children. So she birthed a nonprofit called the Choose Love Movement to honor little Jesse's legacy. At six years old, Jesse's a hero. What impact do you want to make on the world? And on whom? You may want to have the most magnificent home and pour so much love into your children's lunch boxes, help them with their homework, be there for them to help them grow up to be amazing adults. You may want to be a good provider for your family or just be a kind person. Those are all great because your legacy doesn't have to be big in the eyes of the world. It's your legacy. You get to pick it, and you get to live it. Well, this talk is not about dying. It's about consciously, on purpose, living each and every day. Because legacy is cumulative. And when faced with decisions, living in your legacy, when you know down to the bottom, the tips of your toes, how you want to be remembered, it will give you clarity of mind to know what's important to do in the first place. And when the legacy you wish to leave becomes your why behind everything, it'll become your motivation and driving force from the easiest to most difficult decisions that you ever make. Your time and your caring, they're currency. Where do you want to spend yours? Thank you. <laughs>